All right, all right, all right, guys. Welcome back to the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. Wow. I am so sorry for being gone so long. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about as we head for a typical Texas fly fishing early spring pattern where you are where and where I am here in North Texas. Now, this is going to be a little bit wacky as far as a uh, one of my typical reports because I'm a little rusty. Um, there's good reason for that. Um, it's a bad reason, but it's a good reason. And, um, you know... Um, I may even have to go back and drop something in past the ending. And you know what the ending is, right? That is the TPWD scroll, courtesy of our wonderful Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. All I can do is say that uh, it was heavy personal matters. It kind of overtook my life in March. It was unexpected. Nothing wrong with me. Nothing wrong with my spouse or anything like that but it was family and it was bad and uh that's all there is to it um it's just not something that mixes well with fly fishing because i've always been here to provide happiness we want happy 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 people here and it wasn't happy beware of the eyes of march is all i can say and just keep on moving and getting ready because things are going to heat up april and may so, but I got to go back. I got to go back. I got to run down March. Other things other than personal stuff. I have attended a few of the Trinity River Water District. And I got to read this stuff, man, because there's so much and I'm just so rusty. I'm sorry, but um, I may lose eye contact. I've attended a few of the Trinity River Water District's Fly Fest events over the years. And it has existed. I think it's only like five or six years old. And uh, this event in 2022 was particularly excellent and i think people are just finally ready to shed the um the shackles of the pandemic and everybody was just happy smiling and glad to be somewhere outside with more people it's the best event i've seen 2022 was the best the enthusiasm was present and a sigh of relief seems to overcome the crowds as we look past isolation of the pandemic and see the light at the end of the tunnel finally the light at the end of the tunnel is not a train. I can't believe how many times we've fallen back into this. I'm involved with a new fly shop slash coffee shop. Not in that order. Really, coffee's where the money's at, people. Don't don't forget it. Coffee's worth more than a fly shop. Um, and it's in Fort Worth, and it's called Coffee and Caddis. You can find that place, at, uh, that uh, initial setup www.coffeeandcaddis.com hey shout out i'm involved with the fly fishing part of that we'll see what comes of it there is no brick and mortar store yet if you know of any locations of fort worth hey let me know let me know i'm i've kind of found the area for the one that they're looking at now the money people and that ain't me people and uh we'll see what comes of it you know um at the fly fest they were slinging coffee um these these folks that have the store and or the proposed store and danny scarborough and i you know danny the guy can catch he can catch fish in a mud puddle i swear the guy's he's gifted so he ties a lot of great flies too he was there selling flies i was there selling my simple flies he was selling the super sophisticated flies and uh I sold a ton. He sold a ton. Enough to buy a cup of coffee, actually. You know, coffee's gotten a little crazy. There's a bunch of... People walked up and said, I'm a coffee snob. Let's see how this is. I was like, what's a coffee snob? But then I tasted it, and I understand. It is special. So that was that event. Then I went to the Houston Fishing Show, and it was a blast as usual. Um, that That's, you know, I think they called it off two years ago. Last year it was on. I did some stories for Lone Star Outdoor, or a story for Lone Star Outdoor News on the new vendors that were there then. Um, it's changing. Um, there are a couple of vendors. Uh, Truchador from the Valley. It's a trout fishing. This guy's cool. Anyway, I like his designs and stuff. He's a conventional guy. But uh, I like his fishing designs on his clothing and stuff like that. So check out. I think I, I'll get you a link in the in the down in the description to that to that guy. He's he's a cool cat, and from my down south, you know where I came from. 
And then uh, the biggest excitement generated in my brain, in my eyeballs, was a company called Hook and Bullet Eyewear. Now, these guys, I'm a photographer, okay, 35 years in. Eyes are important, and I've taken good care of mine, even though, you know, of course, your eyes age, and I have to wear prescription glasses and all that, whatever. But these guys use Zeiss proprietary nylon for their lenses. The dang things are really clear. There's a lot of science to it compared to the other sunglass makers. These guys are based in science, not in fashion. Guys, I'm telling you. If this if this is as good as it looks, I want to get a pair. They're coming in the next few days. Going to check them out here on the flats in North Texas and on the coast. I'm going to the coast in May, people. In May. I'll get to that. Just easy. Easy. So, that will sum up. You know, I forgot something about March. I, I, know, I know I want to forget March and forget it ever happened, but unfortunately, that, that's not going to happen. But keep your eyes open. Hook and bullet. These guys are the up and comers. If I had to say best in show, best in show right there. Um, sure, there's other vendors that do great things, and there's some catchy little things and, and some odds and ends. And, you know, of course, that show is primarily conventional. But if you don't go to the Houston Fishing Show, you're going to miss some fly fishing cool coolness. I'm going to tell you right now. Um, you know, there are some guys there that are really getting it done. Sight cast fishing. That's another one. It's a fly. Those are fly guys, and they're there. They're there the last two years, and sell great um, uh, fly tying material. So I like those guys a lot too. I think that's got it, man. I just can't. You know, there's been a big battle in March between hot and cold. North Texas is like the front line of that. Um, basically, what starts to happen is the winds from the south start to come back, and they they start to fight back against the northern winds. It it will take a front that's coming here and just push it right off to the east. And that's why you get all the damage over in the east where the media is, and they cover it really well. So that's that. April, the month starts out, very familiar drought pattern across Texas. You know, it's funny because I had written this a few days ago, and I think I was going to record it on Tuesday or whatever. Sunday night, drought, major, major deal. Uh, in Denton County, we're in three levels of drought, just striped through this county. But... Sunday night, it rained four and a half inches at my house, my little old house in my little old neighborhood, and broke the drought pretty much for this area, but it was very spotty, and so depends on where you are, but I'm telling you, this rain pattern, as long as it doesn't rain 14 and a half inches, this is shaping up to be a fantastic setup for fly fishing for carp. Here's your guide. Here's your guide right here. I can show you some of that now. On the flats, Lake Ray Roberts. Got to get it done. You got to be, this is pretty much an uh, intermediate to advanced thing. And, and it's a, uh, there's times where you can just, it can be a no brainer, but it doesn't last that long, but it's coming. It's coming people. Let me tell you what I'm hearing about the rivers. Woo. Wow. Not much water there or too much water there. Those are the two choices. Dams are not opening up because the, the lakes are holding the water they're catching. So that, that's not what's coming down. It's just drainage. And so it's dirty. And it's, it comes and it goes. But, for example, a friend of mine who does guided trips on uh, Brazos River below uh, Whitney... And, man, it takes big groups out, you know. Uh, he's, I think he called it, and I don't know if I got this right. I think he called it a drag and drop or something like that. Paddle, drag your boat, drop it, and start fishing. That's hardly my idea of a good time, people. But, hey, it's, there's worse things you could be doing, like punching the clock, right? So, anyway, drag and drop, whatever. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know what he's calling that. I forgot. Um... This weather pattern, if we can leave out the biblical events, is shaping up perfectly. Uh, and if you don't believe me, feel free to hide and watch when these videos start coming out here in about three weeks. Um, be sure. I'm just going to, you know, I'm, I'm cutting this off because I have, this is like my comeback. <laughs> this is my comeback video uh, from the wherever, from the afterlife. Anyway, um, so. Whoa, 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 let me go, let me go back to this, let me, go, let me add to this, um, I'm not shutting it down right here, um, 
the reason we're indoors today. I've got light coming through here, and you can see the, the light varying and stuff like that. The wind's blowing 35 sustained with 47 gust outside, and I'm sick and tired of being inside for my videos and stuff. We'll head back out somewhere somehow um, when the wind slows down to say maybe 20 instead of 37. I don't know, you know, maybe 25 we can go outside it's just it's just insane out there the dogs are hiding it's so bad when the dogs start to hide because of the wind you know you got a problem okay <clears throat> the reason we think about wind besides fly fishing here is fly fishing on the coast there's no shelter there hardly at all you can hardly get out of it and i'm headed for the coast people uh, at, you know, one of the things that uh, I do is I, I just I do photography for companies that, you know, throw events and stuff like that. And I'll be shooting for Chittum Saturday, May 7th. That's Rockport, Texas. And there'll be Chittum boat owners and some Austin celebrities. So if you want to see a celebrity from Austin, you might fly fishing. You might just need to show up. Um, make sure you see them before they're gone now. And then, um, so Hal Chittum, he'll be there too. Hey, if you haven't seen the, the, uh, the interview done on Millhouse, Millhouse podcast, check it out. Check out that interview. Subscribe to Millhouse. Tell him I sent you. I don't know. They, as if he cares. He does not care, but he's doing God's work right now. Getting these people recorded for posterity it's fantastic so you got to see it um anyway let's see what have i left out don't forget my fly line mats there's a link down there i've got three models now and uh i'm selling i just shipped one to uh florida keys just a few minutes ago i got back from the post office it keeps costing more and more to ship this stuff i might just have to hand deliver the next one to the keys and um so that is that, you know, what I, that's where the, I derive income. Uh, really, the bulk of the money I make is from those fly line mats. If you need one, let me know. If you think of another design, let me know. They're fun. They're fun to make. They work. And I've sold them coast to coast now. And somebody told me they saw mine on a deck in the Bahamas. So we're international now with the uh, fly line mats. Cool. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring up that came up in, uh, it's been a topic for a while, is the spoon fly. Boop, 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 spoon fly. It's been to ride in saltwater fly fishing for a long time because people don't, a lot of guys don't consider it a real fly. You know, it's just like a lot of conventional guides and guys and girls, I don't care, um, they will never acknowledge the greatness or hardly ever acknowledge the greatness of a gold spoon gold spoon you know got a trouble hook on the back you know tony asetta is who i used to throw and uh the 5h tony asetta fantastic because you could throw it a mile and it wasn't just big it wasn't big it was just heavy so anyway and it still had the action tony asetta 5h or five and uh so those guys don't acknowledge their existence and they catch fish on them all the time when nobody's looking. Well, you know, darn it, a fly fishing spoon fly, it works too. And it's not the same principle, it's a wobble principle. Well, I've designed a, a, a body, um, I've spent a lot of time, very scientific, very scientific, spent a lot of time on this. And here we go. These are the ones I make. And what I can do is if you'll, um, I don't know, just contact me. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do, actually. But uh, you can uh, you can get some of those cheaply right now. Like, say, five bucks for 20 of them. And that includes uh, shipping, you know. Because I'm not going to ship them. I'm going to stick them in an envelope and they're coming to you. So I have really bright metallic gold ones. And so 20 of those for five bucks. And you'll never use them all probably because it's, the biggest problem with spoon flies and why people, one of the other reasons people hate them, they're so freaking hard to tie. They involve a wheel, epoxy, all that, you know, and um, they're a killer fly, man. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. It's a go to. It's really a go to. 
So anyway, guys, I am so sorry this taking so long to get back to you. I don't want to spend all my time apologizing. I just say let's move forward. And uh, and anyway, it's, it was hard. It was hard, hard, hard. It was hard. That's all I want to say. Did I say that already? Anyway, <laughs> watch the scroll. Be sure you like and subscribe to the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. And we are going to brighten things up and definitely get out of this hell hole we're in here and uh, and get out in the open. i got to figure out some kind of other setting. I, I'll probably go back to the fly bar outside, you know. Uh, you've probably seen those old videos. I appreciate those of you who did, did not unsubscribe. And for new subscribers, welcome aboard. There is also a uh, kind of what you would call a, a creme de la creme on Patreon where I got I have starter videos for people that are broken down real small increments. You have to subscribe. But get this. get this, okay, okay. You know what they tell you on Patreon. I was like, you got to give people something. Get them subscribed. I was like, okay, well, what can I give them? So my top level subscribers are invited to a party at the fly bar at the end of the year is that cool or what i think it's pretty cool nobody else does that a bunch of strangers coming in i'll probably there'll probably be gunfire i don't know how it's going to turn out but anyway there are many there are not many subscribers now so it, it won't be too crowded um so go to the the tech i don't know what's it called it's uh patreon.com slash fly fishing i'm the only one there doing sports it looks like and uh so far it's very much like a desert, but I don't care. I'm having fun with it. So you guys, you know, you're going to see some things going on here that are going to cross over into my photography, www.shannondrawe.com. That's where my photography is. Um, the crossover because of doing that event for Chittum and then new cameras, uh, maybe two of them um, on the way. And some underwater type stuff I've been avoiding until now. And I figure now that I'm on the downslope of, of uh, doing what I want to do finally, a lot of what I want to do instead of what I have to do, going under the water. So we'll see how that turns out. Guys, there's stuff spliced in here. Hopefully that, that fills in some of the blanks and gets rid of my ugly face on this camera. Um, I appreciate your watching. Thanks again. Thanks for being patient. And we will see you again very soon on the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel since 2008. See, I'm like a button back.